Who's that Pokemon? It's to Sharp. What is that? Hey guys, I'm Drago and today I want to talk to you about the game Infinite Fusion. It's a Pokemon fan game and it is so much fun. I've played all the way through it and I had such a great time playing it. Not sponsored, not affiliated, but this video is centered around that fan game. Basically, it's a game where it's like you're playing a normal Pokemon game, but instead of Mega Revolution or Z moves or Gigamax or anything like that, you have fusing. You know that trend of fusing two Pokemon together to see what you get? It's literally that. And you can fuse any Pokemon. Absol and Eevee, stick them together, that's what you get. Sceptile and Chandler, here you go. Unknown and Klefki. Uh him. With this game, because there are thousands and thousands of fusions to be had, basically anyone can apply to become a spider, and I myself have made sprites for the game. Now basically there's custom sprites which are ones that are made by people, and then there's the sprites that haven't got a custom sprite yet, and those ones are basically generated by their AI system they've got going, where it basically just takes the two sprites of the Pokemon and mashes them together. They're known as the auto-generated sprites. So today I thought it might be fun if I go on the Fusion Dex website, and I basically click the random fusion button, and any fusion I get that is an auto-generated sprite, no matter what it is or how weird it is or how difficult it's going to be to put together, I will make a sprite for that fusion. So if you enjoy this, let me know, I can do more episodes of it. It was actually really fun to do, so I definitely would like to. Fun fact, by the time this video is up, it will be the day before my birthday. Yeah, my birthday is the 14th of October. I'll actually be 23. God help me, I'm not good at being an adult. <laughs> Guys, cherish your childhood while you have it, seriously. <laughs> But yeah, let's get going. All right, so here we are on the website. This is the Fusion Dex, which basically has every single Fusion that is in the game on here. And I'm just gonna click random and see what we get. Any that already have a custom sprite I won't be doing, I'll only be doing the ones with the AI sprites. Okay, here we go, what are we gonna get? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> right, okay, well, let's give it a go. So this is definitely a weird one to do. I think I wanted to keep the hand pose that Tyroke has, but not quite how the auto-generator sprite has done it. I don't like that. Now, according to the Infinite Fusion devs, there are three ways you can make a sprite. One way is what I'm doing here, which is completely from scratch. You're just drawing it completely from hand, no base, you're just going for it. The only base I use here is basically just having Bishop underneath it so I get it the right size, because it has to be the same size as the body Pokemon. Another way is to use bases, and that's basically just taking the already existing sprite and editing it and this is better for fusions that don't have much of a change in pose or anything because you want to get it as close to the pokemon style as you possibly can it needs to look like it's from the actual games there's so many guidelines and stuff you need to follow such as how the shading goes the lines so using the base of the actual sprite can really help with that and the other way is referencing official art and stuff which is quite self-explanatory here's a list of every sprite i've done so far and what method i use for each of them now, as I was sketching this guy, he looked a bit phallic. <laughs> I tried to fix it, but there wasn't much I could do. That's just kind of, you know, what tie rogues, trousers, short things look like. <laughs> but anyway, to explain a bit further on how the sprite works in Infinite Fusion, basically the way it works is the two Pokemon have basically two fusions. So basically how it works is you have to take the head of one Pokemon and put it onto the body of the other Pokemon. And the head Pokemon is the one that determines the colours. So here, tie rogue is the head and Bisharp is the body. So it needs the head of tie rogue and the colours of tie rogue, but the body shape of Bisharp. And obviously you can mix and match some features and stuff but that's the general guideline you go for. So that also means that this has a reverse fusion where Bishop is the head and Tyrogue is the body. So I always start by doing black outline first just to get the general shape. Tried to keep the pixels as close to the shape of Tyrogue's actual head as I could. And I edited the sort of lumps on his head to look a bit more like Bishop's blade. The rest of it was mostly by hand. I did directly reference the hands of Tyrogue to get them right because hands are difficult even in pixel form. And the body blades of Bishop, those things that stick out. I did one set of lines and wasn't 100% happy with it so I went over and basically did it again just to refine it a bit further.
Once my lines were done, it was time to get the base colouring in. I used the same method as I use for any art, which is get the base colour, fill the canvas in on a layer below the line layer, use the magic wand tool, select around the lines, delete the excess, and then just use clipping mask to fill in the areas of different colour. I always go flat colour first just to sort of lay everything out and it also means that I can change the colours if I don't think they're working. Tyro's colour scheme is quite flat if you compare it to Bishop's. There's a lot of things on Bishop that need colouring, but there's not many on Tyro. So I decided to actually take the red of the mouth and use that on areas. I really wanted to spice it up a bit rather than just the different pinks of Tyro. So for the metal parts and the blades, I used both the red and that sort of orangey colour that is within the mouth. And I think it really just did make it pop a bit more and be a bit more of an interesting fusion. The other thing I did was make the body of the chest and well the torso and stuff. I made that to be the bandages of Tyro because I thought that fit quite well. So with the base colours in and the base lines in, I can now go into actually shading the pixels. This basically consists of taking the official colours from the official sprite, colouring in the lines and adding the shadows and highlights. Now you have to try to keep it as on brand as possible. So this does mean tending to make it pixel perfect. So it can be quite a meticulous process, but it's actually really fun to do this and then get the final result. It's also great practice for spicing in general. Pixel art is not something I do often, but I find it really fun. And making these Pokemon ones that are exactly in the style actually really helped me learn how pixel art looks and how you can get it to look really cool. Helps me learn about the colours to use and how you work them together, the different shades and tones and hues. That's why I really love making sprites in this game, it's really fun. There are parts where you have to use some creative liberty, like on the legs that is different to both sprites. So that's where you then have to apply what you know from doing it pixel perfect to make it look just like the style. And I think I did it quite well. All right, so that's Ty Sharp done. Let's uh, get off this curse page and see what else it's gonna give me. Oh, this one has already got a sprite. That's a really good sprite. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. <laughs> that definitely doesn't have a custom sprite. <laughs> okay, Pori Chop. Right, okay, here we go then. <laughs> So for this one, Porygon Z was the head and Machop was the body. Now, I felt if I just outright did Porygon's head, there wouldn't be much to say as Machop, especially with the idea I was going for, which was basically having the head and limbs detached from the body and making that Porygon colours as per the guidelines. There wouldn't be much to say it's Machop. So to make it more like Machop, I added those frills that Machop has on the top of the head and I gave it the mouth of Machop, gave it an open mouth, which Porygon doesn't have. But this is what I mean by blending the two aspects of each Pokemon together. It doesn't have to be outright the exact head and the exact body of the two Pokemon. You can mix and match. As long as the general idea that it is mostly one head and mostly one body, then you can do whatever you want. And I think adding in the mouth and the frills or whatever they are on Machop's head, I don't really know. But adding those in did help solidify that this is Machop as well as Porygon Z. The rest of it was just using the base of Machop to put in the torso and the hands and the feet. With this one, having used the bases of the original sprites, I didn't need to do a sketch. I just went straight into making this lines. So once I did the red base, I then put the layer on preserver opacity and I coloured it in black. Very simple colours here, red and blue, a bit of yellow for the eye. Looking back at it now, I probably could have done that stripe that Porygon Z has on the torso. I completely missed that out. Probably could have put that on Machop's torso. Might be something I actually go back and add before I submit it to the game. Anyways, colouring this guy was quite easy. Sometimes the simple and easy things can be the most fun ones to do. Is he giving Rayman vibes, anyone? 
Now, once I had put in the limbs, I felt like there was a bit too much of a gap. I liked it, but I also didn't. So I decided to add in this sort of green electricity energy. Another idea I had for it that I might also submit is making it out of sort of binary squares and having that energy be squares like a digital binary looking thing. If you actually want to see the sprites after they've been edited, you know, the edits that you don't see in this video, then the place to be is my Discord server. Link will be in the description below. You can keep in touch with me and keep in touch with what I'm up to. You can see art that won't be in videos or anywhere else. And you can talk with the people in the community, post your own art, have lots of fun. So yeah, if you're interested in my Discord server, link is in the description. Alright guys, lucky last, let's see what we get. Okay, um, you know what? That's actually probably the least curse of all the ones we've had so far. I can see that working. Let's do it. Let's do it. This one was interesting because it was difficult to sort of get this to look uh, intriguing, I guess. So I went with what the auto generated sprite did start off with, which was take Kakuna's head and place that over Duskull's skull. Unlike the auto sprite, I decided to put in the little chin spike that Kakuna has. And this is also another method that you can do, which I use here, where if you resize it, you can then go in and just clean that up. Because obviously resizing pixel art that isn't in the same aspect ratio, it causes it to go blurry and weird and look horrible. So you can, if you're using the base method, which again, I use for this one because it was quite a simple shaped fusion and there wasn't much to change about the pose and body shape. I scaled up Kakuna's head to fit on Duskull and cleaned that up with the pixels basically. I then also kept Duskull's body shape the same but what I did do was add little uh pincers I guess on the arms. I don't know what you'd call them. You know how bug designs tend to have those sort of blade things as the arms or hands or whatever? Those basically. I added those in. A bit of like a Prey and Mantis vibe. I just thought I gave the fusion a bit more character to it rather than just literally a recolor of Duskull Kakuna. It also gave almost a little bit of a Reaper vibe, which I guess fits the idea of the ghost type and the dust girl. So I'm definitely glad I decided to do that because it adds so much more to the fusion. Now, technically, with Kakuna being the head, this needs to be a Kakuna colour scheme. However, Kakuna doesn't offer much in terms of a colour scheme. <laughs> He's just all yellow. So, I basically did something that is sort of semi-allowed, as long as you don't do it too much, and as long as it works in the context of the fusion, and that is taking a colour from Duskull as well, which was basically the grey of the cloak. Because if I made that yellow as well, it would just all blend in together and it wouldn't work very well. Anyways, with Kakuna's head scaled up, I couldn't pixel perfect do the colouring. This is where once again the creative liberty comes in and knowing how to apply the style of Pokemon sprites into the rest of it where the pixels are different basically. So here I had a lot more room to play around with the eyes and I was able to give the pupils a lot more of a sort of glow to them which also fits Duskull and its red eye glow. It almost reminds me of FNAF and the animatronics with the little white dot eyes. <laughs> Akuna is possessed by one of the five children confirmed. Quickly guys get Matt Pat on this is a massive theory oh my god. <laughs> Honestly Duskull is one of my favourite Pokemon. I think he's really cute. Definitely one of my favourite ghost types. My all-time favourite Pokemon though is Sceptile. Alpha Sapphire was one of the games I played as a kid and I absolutely fell in love with Sceptile. And he was so strong as well. Like every game I've had him in, he's so powerful. I always call him Spyro, which is named after one of my lizards I used to have. But yeah, Sceptile is my all-time favourite Pokemon. Alongside him is Kyogre's one of my favourite, Lugia is one of my favourites, Inteleon is one of my favourites, Typhlosion is one of my- all the starters I've ever had are my favourites as well. And I also really like Corviknight, I think he's cool. Let me know down below what your favourite Pokemon are.
This was so fun. I'm glad I actually decided to do this video. I had this idea ages ago and I started it. You may remember a live stream I did where I did a couple of fusions, but I just lost motivation on them and I only did two and I wasn't 100% happy with how they turned out. So I sort of didn't end up doing the video, but I'm glad I sat back down and did it because it was so much fun to do and I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Leave enough likes and I'll do another episode. Out of these three sprites I did, I think the Porygon Z and Matchup one is my favourite. He's just such a little guy. Look at him. He's so happy. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and maybe subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!